Now, before I get into the kind of nitty gritty of these, uh, of this particular sort of content here, I want to sort of tell you why this is a bit personal to me, this sort of event management stuff. Um, for a period of a time as a teacher in my career, as a PE teacher, the head of department, I ran um, a series of what we might loosely call fun runs, okay, from the college that I was working at. Now, this fun run was kind of an interesting thing because first and foremost, it was actually managed and operated by the students. The students themselves ran the entire event under my guidance, my supervision. So they would um, be completely responsible for it. It's in a core, used to, an old course, it was called Leisure Studies back in the day. Um, the second thing is that the turnover of these fun runs uh, would be in the region of around about £30,000. So these students that I'm mentioning over here, they had a big responsibility. Thirdly, it provided running based events for in the region of 400 to 500 runners. Okay, 400 to 500 runners, and that was in its infancy. That was in the 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 initial versions. As it developed and progressed, we went into the thousands of runners on any particular day. And then finally, guys, what you might find interesting is that we donated huge amounts of money to charity off the back. It was a non it was a uh, not for profit. Um, uh, event and organization and we do it this way now the point I want to make is not that you guys should do a fun run and by the way if you want to look into it you can kind of look it's called the Farnborough 6 fun run I live in a town called Farnborough it's called the Farnborough 6 fun run if you want to go and have a look at it in detail but that but the point I want to make here is that in order to make that successful I and we needed to follow certain principles and actions to make those events manageable and basically what I want to do within this tutorial is I want to um, bring to you one two three four five six seven I want to bring to you eight principles and, act and actions that I believe principles and actions that I believe are essential to the success of any event and when I say I believe they're essential they're also the things that are going to get you credit in your exam of course so let's see if we can go through these so number one guys number one is that our event must be based around research research into feasibility. Now let's just pause and think about the idea of feasibility. What does that mean? So feasibility could be, you know, basically can it work or not? You know, is there demand? Do people want your event? Is there demand for it? And is it commercially viable? Now so if I put commercial, so we want to know: Is this event feasible from the from the perspective of do people want it and can it be commercially successful? Okay, so that's a really nice model, and researching into your event is really important for you to do as an initial step. Secondly, folks, and let's bring this down here as number two. I don't know why I'm going round in sort of a clockwise model here, but we really want to think about what I would refer to as cost calculations. When you plan out your event, you need to be as precise as possible around your cost calculations and your budget and those things must match and you really should be looking to achieve as accurately as you can a projection now something I would recommend to you about your financial projections have at least three versions of it okay so I'm gonna put times three and the three versions would be like a really aspirational projection where it goes really well and you can say okay we, we get so much money in and therefore we can afford numerous additional things you wanna look at a realistic projection and you wanna look at a pessimistic projection and basically base your thinking around until you've got some experience with your event around the pessimistic projection so that you know that you're not gonna overspend I think that's nice advice to give thirdly guys event managers must undertake risk assessment okay and now of course there will be more risk depending on what you do but can I really stress to you that with your risk assessment you must be working with some kind of experienced person and when I first started doing the fun stuff with my students we worked with some athletics clubs to help us do the risk assessments plan the routes make sure that they followed guidance and health and safety okay so that's a really nice principle for you to address Number four, let's squeeze it in down here. Number four, we have got the idea of, of a timeline of work. Now, I'm not going to get into Gantt charts and things like this. Timeline of work. You want to be absolutely crystal clear as to what your targets are. And those targets, guys, those targets should have what we call milestones. 
Now, a, a, an overall target, like a, a macro target, something for the entire event, it can be quite big. You want to break down your targets into what we call milestones, things that have to be done by a certain point in time. And this naturally brings about deadlines. So if you know your event is three months away, you need much more, left my Skype on, you need much more than simply to say that I, we want the event to go live in three months time. You've got to break it down into mini targets and milestones that will happen between now and the start of the event itself. Really important, and it's quite an obvious one, number five, you must reserve facilities. I cannot tell you the number of events that I have witnessed via schools that have fallen apart because venue has not been booked, or it's been double booked, or we thought it was booked and it wasn't actually booked, or it was mentioned but not booked through the right person. So make sure you do this for both the venue and any equipment you need. Remember that someone saying, yeah, sure, we can do that, is not an agreement. You need a confirmation, preferably, well, always in writing, and that reservation needs to be made. Otherwise, you're going to do all your work, and what's going to happen? It's going to fall apart because you don't have, I don't know, the, the, the sports hall that you need or whatever it is. Number six, we're getting there, guys. I said there were eight. Number six, we are going to appoint staff. Okay, now, this can be like quite simple, such as, you know, it could be the team, perhaps the team of students who are going to contribute this event. But don't be, uh, don't forget that certain types of events need qualified staff. What about people, if yours is water based, what about lifeguards? What about, uh, let's say, refs and officials are quite likely to be something that you might need depending on what your event is. But referees and officials, they cost money and you have to have qualified, let's say, rugby referees or football referees or whatever it happens to be to make your event legitimate. So it's really important that you do that. Number seven, think about how you're going to let people know. It's all well and good putting an event on, but what if people don't know about it? You must follow a model, let me put number seven in here, you must follow a model of advertising, marketing and promotion because you could do a huge amount of work, have a magnificent event, marketing and promotion, but what good is it if nobody shows up? So again, part of your feasibility over here is to figure out what the best channels are for letting people know and getting the information to them. And I think I've just about left myself enough room to squeeze up here our eighth principle in action, and that is the notion of organizing hospitality. So depending on what you need to do, this could be things like catering-based things. You know, you need to provide refreshments, food, drink, water stations, this sort of thing, organized hospitality. But it could be, you know, you might even have residential aspects to your event. You might have to have a, a, a dignitary that's going to come and start off your race, for example. How are you going to meet them, look after them? You've got to make sure that people are looked after. So to be clear, guys, absolutely critical words for you, feasibility. Uh, cost calculations, risk assessment, timeline of work, reserve facilities, appoint staff, advertising, marketing and promotion, and you must get your hospitality right. Those are the eight principles which are gonna cause your event to be successful if they are got right. Cheers.